Hi, I'm Lucy from So Essential, and today we're taking a closer look at the Baby Lock Victory Overlocker, just one of a wide range of overlockers and cover stitch machines available on our site, soessential.co.uk. Now, this is actually an updated version of the Baby Lock Imagine Overlocker, which was my very first overlocker. So I know this machine really well and love it dearly. And at So Essential, we do pride ourselves on using our expert sewing knowledge to help you before and after choosing an overlocker or cover stitch machine. And that's why we've made this video, but we're also here to support you by phone or email too. The Baby Lock Victory is the cheapest Baby Lock machine in the range to offer the automatic thread tension, which means you can go from sewing a piece of cotton jersey to sewing a piece of denim and get beautiful stitches and great results every time. And I'll show you that later in the video. You've also got jet air threading, which threads the loopers at the touch of a lever. So instead of spending hours fiddling with tweezers, you just pop the thread in the threading ports, press a lever and the loopers are threaded for you. You can thread the machine in any order. So if one of the threads breaks or you want to change one color, instead of unthreading the machine like you have to with a lot of overlockers and starting right from the start and re-threading all of the needles and the loopers, with the Baby Lock Victory, you just re-thread that one individual thread you want to change. You can work with four different threads, allowing you to create up to eight main stitch combinations, including a four thread overlocking stitch, a three thread overlocking stitch, a three thread rolled hem, flat lock stitches and a blanket stitch. I'll pop a link in the corner so you can take a closer look at the machine and purchase it on our site. We'll have a look at what comes in the box later in the video, but now let's get started with what this amazing machine can do for you. One of the absolute standout features of baby lock overlockers is how easy they are to thread. And I'm going to start by showing you how to thread for a four thread overlocking stitch. We're going to be using the telescopic thread guide, but this will be extended out of shot. So I'm just going to show you here with the first thread how that works. And it's dead simple. You just bring the thread through the guide like so. So I'm going to repeat that with the other three threads now. And then I'll show you the next step. And the fact that they are so easy to thread just gives you more time to be focusing on your sewing rather than spending hours fiddling with tweezers and getting frustrated. So once we've got the threads through that guide, we're then going to click them into the automatic tension guides here on the back of the machine. And you'll actually hear a click as they go in. And this works to automatically set the correct tension for your stitch. Once you've chosen the correct stitch on the machine, you don't have to worry about fiddling with tensions, which is another massive time and frustration saving factor. You can spend more time sewing and you can literally go from sewing a piece of denim to sewing a piece of jersey without having to worry about tensions. Now we're going to do the really fun bit of the threading. We're going to use the jet air threading system to thread the loopers. So I'm going to start by opening the front cover here and just sliding this cover across and down. And we need to engage two metal tubes here, which will enable us to put the thread in the threading port, press the lever, and it will automatically thread the upper and lower loopers. It really is that easy. So to engage the metal tubes, I'm going to press this button here and press it in and turn the hand wheel towards me. And if you watch here, you'll see those metal tubes engage. So I'm going to hold that in. You'll hear that initial click and then turn the hand wheel towards me. And you can see those tubes just connect there with the upper and lower looper. Then the next step is to pull some thread through and select whether you want to thread the upper or the lower looper. So I'm going to go with the lower first. And then you want to insert a decent amount of thread into the threading port. So I like to just put a bit in and then feed it in further with my finger and just make sure you've got a good sort of couple of centimeters of thread in there. And then if I press this lever down now, you will see the lower looper will th be threaded. So you can see there the thread shot out and that's already done for me. 
And for anybody who's used a manual um, threading option on an overlocker before, you will appreciate how wonderful and easy and time saving that is. You can spend hours fiddling with tweezers on a manual threading overlocker and it literally is just that press of the lever and it's all done for you with these machines, which is wonderful. Um, so let's move this across now to the upper looper. And I'm going to just repeat the process again with this brown thread. So I'm going to insert the thread into that port. So I'm trying to do this so that you can see, see the threading port. And then I'm just going to feed some more of the thread in using my finger like I did with the lower looper. Just feed that in. So I've got a few centimetres in there. And then I'm going to press the lever and you'll see the thread pop out of the upper looper. And there you have it. It really is so simple and so easy to thread those loopers, which means more time sewing for you, which is wonderful. And then before we start sewing, we just need to move this lever across and that disengages those tubes and that enables the machine to move as we sew. Now we're going to thread the needles, but I just want to point out that one of the other major advantages of this Victory machine and just the baby lock machines in general is that you don't have to thread the needles and loopers in any specific order. On many overlockers, you have to thread in a set sequence. And that means if one of the threads breaks or you want to change one of the colors, you have to unthread all of the needles, all of the loopers and start again. With the baby lock machines, that is not necessary. If one thread breaks, you just replace that one thread. So now I'm going to show you how to thread the needles. The first thing I need to do is just make sure that the green line on the hand wheel is lined up with the green line on the side of the machine. And that will make sure that the needles are in the correct position for threading because I've actually got a needle threader on this machine, which makes life easy again. And I'm just going to take the pink thread under the thread guides on the front of the machine, up and over in the same way you would on a sewing machine, and then pass it behind the thread guide on the needle bar. And then the needle threader gives you the option to thread the left or the right needle by just sliding this metal lever across. So I'm going to slide it across to thread the left needle, bring the lever down to engage the needle threader. And then it works in exactly the same way as a sewing machine needle threader. You just draw the thread across the front of the needle and it will pass through the eye of the needle. So that's the left needle threaded. Just pull that thread through. And then we're gonna repeat the process for the right needle. So I'm going to slide the metal lever across to select the right needle, ensure that the thread goes under the guides, up and over behind the thread guide on the needle bar, and then just bring the lever down, bring the thread across the front of the eye of the needle, and then release the lever and the needle's threaded for me. And we are ready to start sewing. All we need to do now is just close the covers and we're ready to go. The machine's now threaded and I just want to show you how easy it is to select the relevant settings for the different stitches. All of this information is provided in the manual and there's also a quick reference guide as well with tables that tell you which settings to select for the different stitches. So the first thing we need to do is use the stitch selector. So I'm gonna open the front cover and you can select A, B, C or D. And for a four thread overlocking stitch, you want to select A. So I've chosen that one. I can close the cover now. The other thing to think about is your differential feed. I'm going to set that at neutral or normal. However, if you're working with a particularly stretchy fabric or one cut on the bias and you notice that the fabric is a little bit wavy when it comes out of the machine after you've sewn it, you can knock the differential feed up and that will compress the fabric as it sews and prevent that from happening. You can also exaggerate that effect and knock it right up to a number two, and that will enable you to use it for a gathering stitch. Alternatively, you might have a fabric that you want to stretch as you sew. You might want to create a lettuce edge, a nice wavy decorative edge on a fabric, and in that case, you can knock the differential feed down 
and that will stretch the fabric as you say but I'm just going to return it to neutral or normal for the four thread overlocking stitch and then the only other things I need to think about are the stitch width and the stitch length and then numbered dials here just refer to the tables in the manual and the quick reference guide and I've selected a seven for the stitch width and a three for the stitch length. This button here enables you to engage or disengage the blade. So it's disengaged at the moment, which is what we want because we want to trim the edge of the fabric as we sew. But there might be times when you don't want the blade to be engaged and you don't want the fabric to be cut as you sew. And in that case, you just turn it to lock. So I'm going to show you the gorgeous stitches now. I should mention that I have lowered the foot. There's a lever on the back of the machine that allows you to lift or lower the foot. That's a rookie error I made when I first had one of these machines. I forgot to lower the foot before I started sewing, so that's worth a mention. I also want to point out these markings here. You can use these like you use the markings on a needle plate on a sewing machine to line the edge of your fabric up to sew different seam allowances. They just act as a guide. And if you can't remember which marking corresponds to which seam allowance, a tip is to just use a tape measure and line it up with the markings on the foot. There's one for the left needle and one for the right needle. If you're doing a stitch that uses the left needle, just line the tape measure up with that left needle marking and then you'll be able to read off to see which seam allowance these markings correspond to. So they are, for example, will sew a 5 8 seam. I'm not going to worry about that now though, I'm just going to show you the beautiful stitches. So to start with, we've got a piece of cotton stretchy jersey. I'm just going to pop that under the foot and sew. And you can see there we've got a beautifully neat, beautifully even stitch, absolutely gorgeous. That's the top of the fabric and that's the wrong side of the fabric. And you can see those lovely lower looper stitches there. And then I'm going to go from sewing that piece of cotton jersey to sewing a piece of mid-weight denim. So it's a much stiffer, more structured fabric, but I'm not going to change any of the settings on the machine. I'm just going to sew. And you can see, even on that fabric, going from a completely different type of fabric, we've got another beautifully neat stitch there. I'll show you the wrong side on the denim as well, but the blue thread doesn't show up particularly well. So I'm just going to flip the fabric over and sew another line of stitches so that you can see it more visibly on the other side. So there you go, you can see that wrong side of the fabric there, you can see the lower looper stitches there, you can see the top of the fabric there and everything is beautifully neat and we haven't had to change any of the settings on the machine when we've gone from one completely different type of fabric to the other which is just wonderful, you could spend so much time fiddling with tensions on a manual machine, trying to work it out and trying to get these results. And baby lock machines just make it so, so easy for you. It's also worth a mention here that if we open up the front cover, if you are ever working with a very specialist fabric or you do want to override those tensions for any reason, there's a screw here to fine tune the tensions so you can increase them or decrease them. Personally, I've had one of these machines. I had the Imagine and the Desire 3. Um, I've had them for about seven years combined um, and I never needed to adjust that dial there, that screw there, but I just wanted to point that out in case that is of interest to anybody at all. I'm going to show you a three thread rolled hem next, but I just want to show you how to make the relevant selections on the machine again. So. I'm just going to select stitch D on the stitch selector. And again, all of this information is provided in the quick reference guide and the manual. And then I'm going to select three and a half on the stitch width. 
And then with the stitch length, I want to go into the other half of the dial. We're currently in the standard size side of the dial. We want to go round into the rolled hem side of the dial. So I'm going to turn that and go into that rolled hem side and I'm going to set that at 0.75 so the stitches are nice and close together and fill in as I sew. We'll sew the three thread rolled hem now which is a pretty decorative stitch used to finish the edge of fabrics. All I've done other than changing the settings which I've just shown you, the only other thing I've had to do is just remove the left needle. So you get a screwdriver with the machine you just loosen that screw and that enables you to remove the left needle but everything else on the machine is set up in the same way as it was for the four thread overlocking stitch. So I've got some cotton here, I'm just going to sew the three thread rolled hem on the cotton. And you can see there we've got this lovely neat finish. The edge of the fabric is finished beautifully. The stitches are actually filled in really well there but sometimes you might find there are some slight gaps in the stitches and if you want to fill them in even more you can use a woolly nylon thread in the loopers and that's a thicker thread often used for these sorts of decorative stitches. And as well as stocking the full range of the machines on our website, we also stock everything you need to go with them. So you'll find a full range of threads, the woolly nylon threads, needles, and all of the accessories you need. But that's the cotton. And then I'm also going to do it on this cotton jersey as well. You can see there on the cotton jersey we've got lovely results again and then if I want to I can just stretch that and exaggerate the wave. I have knocked the differential feed down before I did this just to stretch the fabric as I sew and you can create that lovely wavy edge. So it's a really lovely finish to the edge of your fabrics, really easy to achieve, brilliant for sheer fabrics like chiffon and delicate fabrics as well or if you've got a pattern with a ruffle on it and it suggests a narrow hem but you think oh that will be a bit bulky, I'd rather do something really delicate, this is a great option and you can find lots more ideas like this and tutorials on our YouTube channel so do check those out too. I'm going to show you a three thread narrow overlocking stitch now. So I haven't had to make any changes to the needle or the loopers from the three thread rolled hem. That's all stayed exactly the same. The only changes I've made are I have selected a different stitch. I've selected stitch B on the stitch selector and I've checked the reference guide for the stitch width and the stitch length. The stitch length is now back in the standard side of the dial rather than the rolled hem side of the dial and I've selected three for the stitch length and three for the stitch width. And then we'll just place this fabric under the foot and sew. And you can see there another lovely neat stitch, a nice narrow stitch. And I use, like to use this stitch for finishing seams. I don't tend to use it for construction where I'm joining two pieces of fabric and sewing a seam that's a construction seam. But I do like to use it for finishing the edges of seam allowances. Um, for example, if I'm sewing something with a really delicate fabric and I just want a nice delicate finish to those seam allowances, this is a great stitch for that. So if you're impressed with all the fantastic features of this machine and you'd like to purchase it, just click the link on the screen to visit our website and take a closer look. In the box you'll find everything you would expect, a detailed instruction manual, a quick reference threading guide, the electronic foot control, some spare needles, screws, a replacement blade. You'll find the tools you need, a screwdriver, some tweezers, a brush, and then you'll also find spool caps and some sponge discs for using smaller reels of thread, plus the cone holders for using the larger reels of thread. 
Then if you want to take your sewing even further, another major advantage of the Baby Lock range is that we stock a really wide range of feet and accessories available to purchase separately from, for the machine on our site too. So you might want to buy a piping foot, a beading foot, a lace applicator, an elastic foot. There are so many possibilities. There's also a really good value range of feet about, available to buy as a set and a compendium that shows you in more detail the stitches and where you might like to use them. All of these things are available on our site to purchase separately. Just click the link to take a look and do give us a shout if you need any help at all choosing because that's what we're here for. I've given you a good overview of the Baby Lock Victory, but if you've got any further questions at all, don't hesitate to get in touch. We're always happy to offer our expert support before and after you buy a machine, because we love sewing too. All of our machines come with a full manufacturer's warranty as standard, which is two years on this machine, but can be extended to a total of four years by filling in a simple form. In the unlikely event that you have a problem, get in contact, and the majority of the time we're able to solve any issues over the phone. If this isn't the case, we'll collect the machine and organise everything for you. We offer the best prices, but if you do see this machine cheaper anywhere else, don't hesitate to get in contact and we'll be happy to help. All of our machines are delivered by courier the next working day with a dedicated time slot so you know exactly when your new machine's going to arrive. I hope you're feeling really excited about the Baby Lock victory. Thanks for watching.